Before we get things started today, we have a little unfinished business left over from before Christmas. No doubt about it. On December 14th, we recorded our show called The Prodigy Bowlers Tour Christmas Gift Exchange. Wow. Where Charlie pretty much dusted Christian in a three-game total pins match. And how about that? That is seven in a row. But a certain coach, Randy, forgot to bring the coveted trophy pin to the bowling alley that day. So Charlie had to sign a paper replica of the pin. Surely a poor replacement. So we begin today by getting Charlie's John Hancock on the coveted trophy pin. There is the ceremonial pin signing. And congratulations on the Christmas gift exchange. Thank you. Even though it's ancient history and last year. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And with that bit of housekeeping out of the way, we now turn our attention to our first Prodigy episode of 2018. Celebrating Junior Bowling elevating junior bowlers. This is Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Live on tape from Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, it's Prodigy Bowlers Tour, a series of unofficial, informal, and impromptu after-league challenge matches, staged by some of the most active and engaged youth bowlers in our youth program here at Brunswick Zone Roswell and others from neighboring centers who have come to visit. Today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour, for the first time in a very long while, we set out to get all the players in the field on the show. So they bowled a one-game qualifier to set a seeding, one through 15. From there, we grouped the players into teams of three people. Each team of three has a chance to win today as we bowl a stepladder of three-man Baker. And here are the teams. Bowling in the fifth position, because they bowled the lowest three scores in the field, is the team of Dakota, Dylan, and Nolan. Viewers of Prodigy have no doubt seen Dakota on the show before. He bowls out of AMF Woodstock. And Nolan is a Prodigy regular. He's on our Roswell Varsity League. But this is Dylan's first appearance on Prodigy. He says he's watched every episode. Today, he'll find out if that helps or hurts in his bid to bowl on the show for the first time. They'll face our number four ranked team of Hunter, Anthony, and Faith. Hunter just got his cast off yesterday after sustaining a broken pinky a few weeks ago. Anthony won our first anniversary show back in November, and Faith is making just her second appearance on Prodigy, having bowled in our double ball elimination episode that was released on New Year's Eve. The winner of that opening match will advance to face our number three ranked team of Will, Matthew, and Logan. Will, as you surely surmised, is the one token grown-up in our field today. Matthew is his son and recently won our Under the Boardwalk episode a few weeks ago on Prodigy. And of course, viewers of Prodigy are well familiar with Logan. He's a three-time winner so far this season on Prodigy. The winner of that match will move on to face our number two ranked team of Christian, Tristan, and Mark. Christian is the winningest player on Prodigy so far this season with four victories. Tristan won the seventh frame sweat back in early November. And Mark is still looking for his first win on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. The winner of that semifinal match will have their hands full against our tournament leaders, Josh, Charlie, and Brett. Fans of Prodigy know Josh. He was part of the winning team that captured our Best Ball Doubles Championship. Charlie was our winningest player in 2016-17 and is coming off a win at this season's Prodigy Christmas Gift Exchange. And Brett is making his first appearance on Prodigy today. He's Faith's older brother. And that's our field today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. 
And without further ado, let's get right into match one. The teams had the option of what order they wanted to bowl in, and our five seeds have decided to bowl in the order they finished in the qualifier. But the fourth seeded team has decided to juggle their order a bit. The leadoff bowler will bowl frames 1, 4, 7, and 10. The second bowlers will bowl frames 2, 5, and 8. And the third bowlers will bowl frames 3, 6, and 9. Now, unlike most Baker matches you see on TV, each team will alternate lanes in regular PBA match play style rather than bowling their entire game on one lane. The higher ranked team has the choice of starting lanes and the team of Hunter, Anthony and Faith have decided they want to finish first. So the team of Dakota, Dylan and Nolan will start us off. And leading off on that team is Dakota. And right out of the gate, a perfect strike from Dakota to get things started. And now for our four-seeded team, Hunter up on the right lane. And we're going to have a slight delay here as we fail to get the arrows oriented in the right direction on the overhead scoring. So Dakota's strike registered with the other team. Your scoring on the video screen is correct. It's just the scoring in the bowling center that we have to fix here. It'll take just a second. Hunter was actually the highest finisher among the three kids on the four-seated team. Anthony was next in the standings, Faith third, but they've opted to flip the order for bowling. And a 10 pin for Hunter. Your eyes don't deceive you, he's bowling two-handed. Now this little guy just got a cast off his pinky and he bowled a little bit with a broken pinky and eventually it uh, Proved not such a great idea as he had to get a cast on it and was sidelined over the holidays. But while he was bowling with it, he shot 240, his high game ever. But now he's good to go. Well, you see their faces above each frame that they'll be bowling, and you see the Scoring minus 11, that means that they're down 11 pins. That's just above Faith's face. And that indicates who's up. And she has left the 1, 2, 5, 9. A bit of an unusual spare. Here's how you convert it. Put it right about where you would for a strike. Just like that. A great shot by Faith. Worth a second look. And now our first look at Dylan up on the right lane. Dylan gets very low at the foul line, sometimes too low. Sometimes his arm is uh, bouncing the ball off the floor before he lets it go. He gets so low. But he's left a fairly simple spare, the 1-2. We're bowling on a sport pattern today. As Dylan covers the 1-2. We're bowling on Mexico City. 45 feet of oil, which would put it in the long oil category, I suppose. Next up is Nolan. And we're gonna see this a lot today. These kids are so used to seeing the ball hook on the back end 
But bowling on long oil, you have to allow for it. It's not going to recover. The one two nine, you shoot it pretty much the same way. Faith shot the one two five nine. Put the ball on the right side of the one pin. The one will take out the two. The ball will get the nine. Oh, not over there. Got to hit the pin in front. No matter what spare you're throwing at, you always have to hit the pin in front. And oh, he fouled. Nolan fouled. So that's seven out for them. And Anthony leaves the one, two, four, eight. We're going to take a look at his release. I want you to pay particular attention to how far off the floor the ball is when he lets it go. Very little knee bend. He needs to get lower so that he can roll the ball. With that much loft, it's going to skid even further. And on long oil, that's not helpful. You want that ball to get rolling sooner. Here's how you make the one, two, four, eight. Oh my goodness gracious. In my life, I've only seen that one other time where a player hits the left side of the head pin and the two doesn't get the sleeper eight. That's crazy. Hunter goes Brooklyn and doesn't quite get the nine to go, so he's got a, a simple single pin spare. Should be no problem for him. He makes these almost with his eyes closed. But once again, we see these kids expecting the ball to recover on the back end. But where the oil goes longer than they're used to seeing, it's not going to come back as much. So now Dakota up on the right is team with a 21 pin lead. Well now this is the flip side of what we see on long oil. As he leaves the 310 put the ball right between them to avoid having the ball sail by on the right. The tendency sometimes is to pull it and help it up toward the pocket. You do that and it goes high or crosses over. Or misses completely left. Wow. Well, we've seen eight frames bold and we've got five open frames so far. All right, Dylan moves over to the left lane. Team's lead is down to just nine pins now. Left again. Now we're going to take another look at Dylan's swing on the coach's clicker. I want you to pay attention to his balance arm. Watch where his left arm goes. Look where it is. It's behind his right shoulder at release. It's no wonder he misses left. His right shoulder gets way ahead of his left shoulder. If he'll work with his coach on correcting that and keep that balance arm out to the left and not let it get behind his back, he could make a pretty big improvement pretty quickly. Faith tickles the head pin. Gets a piece of the pocket. Doesn't quite get the four pin to go down. But another easy spare. Oh, look out. Another pulled shot. These kids see the ball failing to hook like they expect it, and so they try to help it toward the target and they end up pulling it left. All right, Anthony up on the left lane. You see that big loft that he gives it that makes the ball skid farther down the lane before it reads, which is not what you're looking for on long oil. The washout, the one, two, eight, ten. And it does not get up, they're just 
borrowing too much, throwing it too far to the right, thinking it's going to come back, and it's not going to come back. And when they compensate for that, they seem to miss left. They're not finding that happy medium that they need to get it on target. All right. Nolan up on the right lane. Nolan bowled the low game in qualifying, but in this unusual format where all 15 participants get to bowl, he makes the show anyway. Goes through the nose that time and leaves the 3-6-10. Put the ball on the three and the six. Six will take out the 10. He goes cross lane at it, but sends it too far to the right. And another, oh, and he fouled again. That's why he walked away. Watch his reaction. He knew it. He heard the buzzer. And he knew immediately. Well, the good news is it's only going to cost him two pins. He just needs to move his starting position back about six inches or a foot. And that foul line will be taken out of play. All right, Dakota up on the left lane. Oh, and he pulled it too. But that one gets a huge break. Goes through the nose. Watch this. That's the four pin, I believe. Yep, the four pin gets the seven. And Hunter just doesn't give it room. And he's got the one, three, six. You shoot this just like a strike. Put the ball on the one and the three. Oh, and he chops the one right back. We'll watch his reaction to this. Oh. He's usually a pretty good little spare shooter. Oh, and Faith pulls it left. Somehow she gets nine out of that. Well, I would tend to think this is a pretty simple spare, but we've seen three opens already this game on nine counts. Make that four. So another open, and through eight frames, they only have one mark. You're not going to win many games that way. So Dylan with a golden opportunity now up on the right lane. His team working on a strike can extend their lead to 49 if Dylan can catch one here. Oh, I'd say that was good. And I'd say he knew it as soon as it left his hand. Watch his reaction to this. Yep. So Nolan takes over here on the left lane. Another strike would just about put it away. Oh, that was close. Just a little high, leaves the 10 pin. It could have been a split. And no, into the moat. Can anybody make a spare? So the lead shrinks to 36. That keeps these guys in it. They can shoot 137. It'd take a miracle. And it doesn't happen. And with that, 
Dakota, Dylan, and Nolan claim this first match. And if there was any doubt, Anthony whiffs the 10 pin and can anybody get a mark on this team? Hunter says, I got a mark for you. Too little too late, but might make him feel a little better anyway. Let's see if he can put another one up on the board. A little high. Oh, but look at this. That's a different kind of messenger than what you're used to seeing. Watch this. I believe it's the head pin that gets caught over there in the traffic and the 10 pin falls over and rolls it into the four. Watch his reaction to that 11th frame shot. Yes. All right, one more for good measure. This one hooks high and he gets seven, but that's a 27 fill. A good finish for Hunter. And unfortunately, it's not going to be enough as Dakota will go through the formalities of finishing out the match. His team having already salted this one away. And he gets a ripper. Two more shots here in the 10th for Dakota. That one comes up a little thin. He's got the 2-4-5. This is all academic. Doesn't matter if they win by one or if they win by 101. They're moving on to the next match. It's just a question of what the final score will be. And again, sending it wide, it doesn't come back. That's eight out, a 151 game. Doesn't usually win on Prodigy, but this time it's good enough to send them into match two against our number three seeded team. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit prodigybowlerstour.com to see the selection. See the Ash Gray Celebrating Junior Bowling Elevating Junior Bowlers t-shirt or the Who Will Win the Coveted Trophy Pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, bowl me. There's a t-shirt that says, bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press. And all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to prodigybowlerstour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's prodigybowlerstour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to prodigybowlerstour.com. That's prodigybowlerstour.com. Well, it wasn't pretty, but there you see the results of match one as the number five seeded team of Dakota, Dylan, and Nolan 
found just enough marks to get past the team of Hunter, Anthony, and Faith, who had trouble closing frames. We talk about it all the time on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. It's always true, but especially when you're bowling on demanding sport shots, you better bring your spare game. So now, as we move on to match two, Dakota, Dylan, and Nolan better step it up if they want to get past our number three seeds, the team of Will, Matthew, and Logan. I would expect the quality of the bowling to pick up a little bit here in match two. As these, these three players, Will, Matthew, and Logan, are all capable of running off a big score. They have chosen to finish first, which means that the team of Dakota, Dillon, and Nolan will start things off on the left lane. And that means it's Dakota who's leading off. Seems like a recurring theme. The kid's sending it a little bit wider, expecting the ball to recover, and on 45 feet of oil, it's not really going to recover that much. Especially when they put a little extra speed on it. All right, got to get the ball to cross over to the Brooklyn side to make the 1 2 4. just about like that. So a spare to begin. And now we get our first look at Will, our token grown-up in the field. Go, Will. Definitely. Well, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, I know, but once again, the ball wide of the mark, I know Will is used to bowling on long oil, so he'll know how to make this adjustment. But we've seen this more than a few times today already. The one, two, just get the ball to cross over Brooklyn and you'll cover it easily. Well, that's just high enough that it took out both pins and now we'll see Matthew who won our Under the Boardwalk episode a few weeks ago over the holiday season. Twelve years old. I kid you not. He throws a lot of ball, but even then it doesn't quite get back. And he leaves the 2-7 baby split. This is the left-hander's baby split, but every once in a while you'll see a right-hander leave it. Put the ball on the left side of the two. The ball will deflect into the seven. Not a terribly difficult spare for a right-hander. Well, he made it the hard way. That's not how we recommend doing it, but... Whatever it takes. That's back-to-back -back marks to start, so we're already showing improvement. And now Dylan up on the right lane. Oh, he comes in light and gets the wall shot. Watch this, the head pin will go to the left board and come back. The four was already out. It just got the five and the seven. A good break for Dakota, Dillon, and Nolan. And now Nolan would love to capitalize on that break by putting another strike up. And wait a minute, he's up on the left lane. He thought for a moment he was up on the right lane. But he was right the first time. Up on the left. Brooklyn. That's one way to do it. That's one way. So smile for the camera. There you go. There you go. 
but that's big. Doubles have been rare so far. Heck, marks have been rare so far. Now, Logan. And that one breaks high, and he leaves the six pin. As he goes to the other table where he had his spare ball. He will go cross lane straight at the six pin. But he pulls it left and misses it. It's like there's a force field over this pair of lanes. Spares have been hard to come by so far today. And now Will on the left. Oh, my goodness gracious. That ball didn't look bad. He gave it a little extra loft. It might have skidded a little farther than he would have liked. But clearly it didn't get into enough of a roll on the back end, and now he's left the 8-10. Nothing more to do with this than just go for one and hope it bounces out. And that's nine out. And back-to-back -back opens for the team of Will, Matthew, and Logan. So Dakota will see if he can continue this string of strikes for his team. They already have a 35-pin lead. He can make it 45 with a strike here on lane 40. How about a ripper? Great shot by Dakota. Take another look at that one. The ball will hit in that half pocket and watch the five fly over toward the seven. And now Dylan in the fifth frame. This is going left. Breaks up the split, leaves the 6-10. And he goes to his bag and grabs his spare ball. Moves to the left, he'll shoot cross lane at the 6-10. And that's well done. So it'll be Matthew up next in the fifth. And that one comes up just a little bit high. Look at this, the 4 7 10. And this is how you make it. It's a beautiful thing when a player can get it to go. Just barely grazed the four pin. The ball will get the seven. And if you cut it just right, you get that four to slide over into the 10. But not like that. Too much four pin and another open. That's three opens in a row. And our three seeds are having the same problem closing frames that our four seeds suffered through in match one. Thin. And at least this is a fairly easy spare. Of course, he whiffed one earlier. Look at Logan. Look at where his hand is. It's way over on the side of the ball. See how his fingers are over on the side of the ball? If he was a little more behind the ball, Coming up the back of it, it would get into a roll sooner on long oil, which is what you want. That release with the hand on the side is great on dry lanes, where you need to get some length before the ball breaks. 
But on long oil, where you want to get it rolling, you need to come up the back of it. But a spare nonetheless for our three seeds. But they have fallen 54 pins in arrears with Nolan up on the right lane. And that ball sails wide. A seven count. And he leaves the one, two, four. Now the trick here is just move your feet about four, maybe five boards to the right. Throw it right over your strike target. Get that ball to cross over into the Brooklyn side. And you can't do it any better than that. So a good shot for Nolan. And Dakota will move over to the left lane. They are clean through six frames. I would imagine if you could get a clean game today, that would be pretty close to remarkable. The three pin could have been worse. He had the 310 standing there for a moment. The ball went through the nose. It could have been almost anything. But a simple spare. The three pin being part of the pocket that you're shooting for. Should be able to just move your feet a board or two to the left. Maybe three boards left and just fire it at your strike target. Dakota takes care of it with ease. And now Will will move back over to the right lane. Where he started things this match. Pretty good ball there, just a tick high. Leaves the four pin. Now, I want you to watch something with Will when he shoots this four pin. Watch his balance arm, his left arm. The modern player typically today uses their balance arm to help open and close their shoulders, but Will's left arm does almost nothing. Just out to the left. It's very unusual nowadays. But it works for him. Most players today, when they get that ball in the back swing, their arm is out in front of them. And then it swings around to the left as their shoulders square up for the release. Good shot by Matthew. Just doesn't quite finish strong enough to slap out the 10. But that's three nine counts in a row on the first ball, so they're trying to get zeroed in here. Trailing by 52, Matthew cross lane for the 10, and look out. It won't hook back off the gray board. And that's another open. That's four opens in eight frames. All right, Dylan up on the right. Lays it down gently on the lane. But an eight count leaves the one and the two. Pretty easy spare. move a couple of boards, two or three boards, maybe four boards right. Just let that ball drift left of the head pin. About like that. Well, if you'd have seen these three bowl during the qualifying round, 
I don't think you'd have guessed that they would have much of a chance in the stepladder. They were pretty far back. Through the nose leaves the six pin. For example, Dakota shot 132 in the qualifier, Dylan a 127, and Nolan a 103. As they were 13th, 14th, and 15th in our 15 player field, and hence the five seed. But they have managed to get through the first two matches unscathed. There's the kind of shot we expect to see from Logan. Comes a little too late to do his team any good. And you could almost tell right off his hand that ball had a left to right trajectory and you've almost got to play up the boards on this pattern. If you're playing that far to the right. He leaves the washout the one two four ten get the ball left of the head pin knock it into the ten. But no nothing is moving left today and that's another open frame. Five open frames for Will, Matthew, and Logan. And a pretty even distribution as everybody had a hand in making opens. You might say it's been an open season on marks so far in these first two matches. As Dakota once again gets to take a victory lap at the end. Makes a pretty nice commercial shot there on the first ball on the 10th, leaving the solid four. A mark would get them into the 200s. But it doesn't come up, and it doesn't matter. It's a 199 to 137 win and our five seeds the underdogs in this competition moving on to match three next. So the number three seeded team of Will, Matthew, and Logan succumbed to the same problem Hunter, Anthony, and Faith had in the first match. Too many open frames, five of them to be exact. And you're just not going to win many matches opening in half your frames. So our number five seeded team moves on to match three, where they'll face our number two seeds, the team of Christian, Tristan, and Mark. All three of these fellows showed some mastery of this pattern in the qualifying game that set the seedings and the team groupings. Now they've decided to have Christian lead off, Mark will bowl second, and Tristan third. Now if you saw my top 10 things that were great about 2017, you know that Christian had his own number. The number five best thing that happened on Prodigy Bowlers Tour in 2017 all of Christian's gutters and mishaps. It began on the February 11th show as we were setting the scene. Christian working on a spare here in the 10th frame. All he needs is any sort of reasonable count, a spare, and just a few pins, and he'll be in the championship round. But with that first ball in the 10th, he loses 10 pins in count, 
And now, even if he spares and strikes on the fill ball, the best he can do is 189. What? He needed to beat 191 to get to the championship round. Christian is out, and the field is set. Christian has made himself a target for ridicule. If it wasn't a simple single pin spare, oh my goodness, he fell off balance. And he pulls it. It was his chronic problem with specific spares that were a constant state of frustration, like the 3610. But for sheer comic relief, nothing quite matches Christian's penchant for throwing it in the moat just when we least expect it like he did after clinching the December match play event. 269 with a strike. Why? And today, once having the single ball elimination challenge all wrapped up, Christian just couldn't help himself. Not once, but twice. Now, we know that Christian is pretty easily embarrassed, but he is glad to have that in his past. That was 2017. This is his first ball of a brand new year, a fresh start, a fresh slate. And the same old Christian. <laughs> I just don't have words. Well, he's getting it from the peanut gallery now. Well, I know he didn't want to have that start. All right, this for a spare. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Not a lot better, but... And as if he needed to, to add insult to injury, the 10 pin slides over about four inches and doesn't fall, and that is six out to start 2018. He's turning red. Oh, gosh. Well, I feel for him. There's a strike to start for Dakota. And an early 14-pin lead for his team. Thanks to Christian's mishap in frame one. And now Dylan up on the left lane. Well, now here's a leave we don't see every day. The 1589, sometimes referred to as the T formation. For obvious reasons. You shoot it just about like you would a strike. Got to get up. He picks the five behind the one and gets the nine, but that's eight out. So this match is even again. So Christian gets a reprieve. Mark goes through the nose, nearly leaves a wide open split. But the seven pin goes out late and he leaves the three, six, 10. This a very makeable spare. Just put the ball on the three and the six. Six will get the 10. And that's perfectly done right there. Good shot by Mark. Take another look at it. He plays it down the right side of the lane. We don't recommend that, but he puts it in the right place. And now Tristan up on the left. Oh my goodness. All right, Tristan with the one, two, three, five, six. I don't think we've seen this spare on Prodigy this year. 
But you shoot this just like a strike. Well, not just like he shot the last strike, but... Look out. And that one too high and misses the six. And another open frame. And closing frames has become the mantra for these teams. Got to close frames. There's one in the pocket, and no one has just the 10 pin left. See if he can make a spare. He'll go cross lane at the 10. Takes his spare ball and doesn't give it room. Well, we're not exactly seeing a uh, shot-making exhibition today, are we? These kids are definitely having issues with the long oil. Let's see what Dakota can do with it. He's been pretty steady today. Well, that's as good as you can throw it right there. Nice tight line. This is the way you play long oil, more toward the center of the lane. And you don't give up the pocket. You just aim right at it. Ball's not going to hook a lot. And somebody yelled out, keep it between the gray boards. I think that someone was me. All right, let's see him make a good shot. He's really making a concerted effort to keep his swing down a little bit, and it is helping him. I think the reason why Christian has been throwing so many gutter balls in the last year is because he gets his shoulders so wide open at the top of his swing, and that's okay when the lanes are hooking and you've got to throw it out to the right, but on long oil like this, you can't throw it out to the right. It's not going to come back. All right, Christian has a new arsenal, so he doesn't really have a traditional spare ball. He's got this urethane ball that he'll use, but he hasn't really mastered the throw it straight shot. And so he's still got some learning to do. All right. See what Mark can do over on the left lane. Comes up a little light. Leaves the 2-5. Mark, a lower rev player. You would expect he might have more difficulty on long oil. But what I've found with a lot of these lower rev players is the different patterns don't affect them as much. They just play their same shot. It affects them on shots like that where the ball doesn't pick up and doesn't quite move left like they want it to. So another open and we're seeing a repeating theme for some of these teams. They just can't close their frames. Now Dylan up on the right. His team's working on a strike. And when the lanes are tough, you take them however you can get them. It wasn't picture perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Watch his reaction. He's going to give it the body language. He'll take it. So now they've moved out to a 37 pin lead and Nolan with a double working can extend it to 47 if he can pick up another strike here. 
It'll have to be Brooklyn. And it is. And he's giving them the business. And gives Christian a slap of the hand. We may have to take Christian to the hospital. <laughs> At least it wasn't his bowling hand. Doesn't get up. Now you see Tristan is playing the outside of the lane. And on long oil, you think when the lanes aren't hooking, you gotta move farther right. Here's how you make the one, two, eight. But actually, on long oil, you want to play more toward the center of the lane. The reason why is the ball doesn't have as much room to hook on the back end. It needs to start, it needs to come off the pattern closer to the pocket. Short oil, you move out to the right edge. But on long oil, let's see, this one's 45 feet. You got 15 feet, just 15 feet of dry at the end of the pattern. So the ball doesn't have as long to recover. So it needs to come off the pattern closer to the pocket than it would on short oil. Make sense? You can play out to the right, but you gotta point it left. And that introduces other problems, like crossing the track. There's a much better shot by Christian. It just doesn't quite finish hard enough. I suspect he's probably not got the right ball in his hands. He got a new arsenal over the holiday break, and he's still getting used to it and figuring out what each ball will do. And Christian still has a little more to learn about how to go through a, an arsenal's different balls and uh, the progression from one ball to the next. But it's a mark. Just the second one for his team in seven frames. As this match is slipping away. Dakota up on the right lane, his team with a turkey up, a double working. Now that one doesn't quite get back. He gave it a little more room to the right. And so he's left with the two, four, five. Here's how you make the two, four, five. Put the ball between the two and the five. The two will take out the four. Now, I'd rather see him play down the left side of the lane, but at least he's not way over to the right. Crosses over, gets it on the wrong side, but gets it nonetheless. And through seven frames, we got one team with just two open frames and one team with five open frames. Can you guess which team is leading? Yeah, through the nose. And Dylan has the 310 baby split. Watch his body language. He's going to try to get something to fall, but sometimes all the body language in the world just doesn't help you. Back door? Yes! Not the way we recommend making the 310, but we'll see his reaction to this. He knows it's left, but he got away with it. And that maintains the 53-pin lead. There's Mark with one right in the hole. Take another look at Mark's strike here. 
That is perfect. All right, let's see what Tristan can do. Well, there's 10 in the pit. And they have finally started to find a little something here at the end. We'll watch Tristan right over the second arrow. He's pointing it left. And we'll watch his reaction this time. Tristan doesn't show much emotion. That's about as much as you'll ever get from him. Nolan wide of the mark. Leaves the 1-2-7-8. One, one we don't see all that often. Here's how you make it. You got to put a little hook on the ball. Get that ball moving left. It'll run on through and get the seven, and you'll hope that the two goes back and gets the eight. Oh, he's just a little high on the one pin. And so an open as he seeks, <laughs> he seeks condolences from Christian and gets nothing. All right, Dakota will finish off. There is a strike and Well, let's see here. Team of Christian, Mark, and Tristan. Well, we'll check the score in a minute. There's another look at Dakota's strike. Christian, Mark, and Tristan can strike out for 167. Dakota just needs three pins. And that'll do it. So look who's moving on to the championship match. The team that I don't think anybody thought had much of a chance. As Christian going ahead and finishing out and leaves the 8-10. Dakota drops one in the moat. Doesn't matter. That's a 174 for his team. Well, there's a fine way to finish. Another open frame and a 131 for the team of Christian, Tristan, and Mark. And it's the five seed against the one seed for all the cheese. You know, we begin each episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour reminding you that the show is best viewed full screen. And here are some Prodigy heads to show you how it's done. They sent in their prodigy selfies to let the whole world know they support junior bowling and are loyal fans of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. The Prodigy Kingdom is growing rapidly. We went over the 7,000 subscribers threshold over the holiday season, and we're already about halfway to 8,000 subs. Thanks to everyone who watches and supports what we do. Now, if you want to get your face on the show, and let the world know that you're a prodigy head, take a selfie in front of your big screen TV, your computer, or your mobile device with Prodigy Bowlers Tour on behind you, full screen of course, and email it to me at randy at prodigybowlerstour.com. Remember to include your name, your age, the city where you live, and which episode you're watching. We try to get as many Prodigy selfies on each show as we can. So keep watching. Who knows? You might be included in next week's show. Well, we're through the first three matches. And so far, our number five ranked team, which showed very little signs of life during the qualifying round, has proven surprisingly resilient thus far in our stepladder finals. 
And now they've advanced to the championship match, where you would think they'll have their hands full with two of Prodigy's best bowlers in Josh and Charlie, and the X Factor, Brett, who's making his first appearance on Prodigy today. Now our one seeds have decided to juggle their order somewhat from how they finished in the qualifier. Charlie's gonna lead off, which also puts him in the anchor position. Brett's gonna bowl frames two, five, and eight. And Josh will be the setup man for the 10th. He's bowling frames three, six, and nine. Being the higher finishers, they had the choice of starting lanes and they wanna finish first. So the team of Dakota, Dylan, and Nolan will be getting us started here. And our number one seed's the only team in the field where all three players shot a game in the 200s during the qualifier, so I would expect them to step up. Dakota starts the match and comes up just a fraction high and leaves a solid four. It's probably worth noting that our number one seeded team also bowled their qualifying game on lanes 39 and 40. So they should kind of have an idea of what this pair is going to do. Josh pulled 214, Charlie a 208, Brett 201 in the qualifier. Here's Charlie to start off. And he just takes a frozen rope and goes right at the pocket. And that's really what you gotta do on Long Oil. He's playing from the outside, pointing it up. Old school. Throwing his Optimus solid. And now our first look ever on Prodigy at Brett. And that one sails wide and he leaves the unusual 1-8. We haven't ever seen this before on Prodigy, I don't believe. Just put the ball on the left side of the one pin. Pretty high on the one pin, will do. That's got to get up. I just can't stress it enough. I mean, these kids, especially the ones that are not that experienced bowling in tournaments on sports shots, they're just not used to seeing the ball not finish. But you've got to go pretty much straight at it. We'll watch. Dylan in split screen. Oh my goodness. Well, he had the 4 9 looking at him for just an instant. But he got it to trip out. We'll take another look at it. Oh, this was trouble all the way down the lane. And something came by, probably the 2 pin, and got the 4 and the 9. Not how, it's how many. Left. Breaks up the split. Leaves a routine spare, the 610. Nolan knows what to do with this, and by now he should know not to borrow too much to the right. Look out. Ooh. Just gets the spare. Another look reveals that this ball was almost too wide, but he gets a piece of the six. And watch his reaction. All right, here's Josh. Well, you heard Charlie call out, hook the whole lane. Well, it's not going to do that on this pattern. Even Josh having a hard time getting the ball to come back. He throws about as much ball as any junior bowler in the state of Georgia. Yeah. 
and makes the one two on the right side. And Josh is going to have to realize that you just can't borrow as much as he's trying to borrow. Now you see where Charlie is starting way over on the right edge of the lane. Now he drifts a little left. Oh, he's pulled this one. He pulled that one left of the second arrow. Now I know he was playing outside the second arrow. Watch this. He gives it the left-hander's pose, knowing that that's going to hit the Brooklyn pocket, but uh, and then he makes the real pro move and checks his shoes because when you make a mistake, it's always the shoes or the approach. It couldn't possibly be the bowler. That's what you see the pros do all the time. All right, Dakota on the right. See if he can keep the game clean for his team. Oh man, he just threw his Sunday ball right there. The ripper, I mean the classic power shot. Ball hits the half pocket, now watch the five pin. Whistle over into the seven and here comes a messenger just in case the 10 even thought about standing up. This time Dylan doesn't get the break on the four and the nine. And the seven stays up just to give him a little extra company. Watch his reaction. He gives it the body language, but the pins don't speak that language. And here's how you make the four, seven, nine. Get the ball way over to the left of the four pin. Slide it over into the nine. Can be done, but not like that. And you see him gesturing, missed it by that much. All right. So Brett's team rooting him on. They now have the lead by a pin. And with that 10 pin, this match is all knotted up. Cross lane. Oh, look out. Oh, that was wide. That was wide all the way. And so they surrender the lead back to team five, Dakota, Dillon, and Nolan. And it'll be Josh who will try to bring them back here. Another split screen look at it. And Josh shreds the rack. Finally getting the measure of these lanes. Here's how it's done. He doesn't give up too much. Doesn't borrow too much to the right, and that ball just comes storming into the pocket. So now Nolan, with his team nursing an 11-pin lead up on the right. Well, well. We don't see that from Nolan all that often. Remember, Nolan throws a 12-pound ball. You don't see rippers very often from 12-pounders. He actually had a messenger coming back over. All right. Well, let's see if Dakota can put another one right behind it. That would extend their lead to 21. That's wide but he somehow gets nine out of it. But now that opens the door for 
our one seeds, Charlie, Brett, and Josh, because they have a strike working, and with the lead down to 11, this match could become a one-pin match here in just a moment. Dakota better cover this two-pin. And he gets it. So now it's on Charlie. A strike to close this match down to just one pin. Brooklyn. Oh, it went. Well, I don't think that one's going to go on his highlight reel. But he's not going to give it back either. Watch this. It goes Brooklyn. And the nine took a moment. But it finally went. And watch Charlie react to it. Uh, well, I'll take it. Yeah, that was a good one. I think he was being a little facetious with that gesture. All right, Brett. Comes in just a little thin. He's got the 2-5, and he moved the 5-pin. That 5-pin is a little off spot. See? It's a little farther away. That makes this a little more choppable. He's got to be careful. Oh! Well, that's what we were talking about. So, the team of Dakota, Dillon, and Nolan get up in the eighth with a 15 pin lead. Gotta fill frames now. Oh, he comes in light. And he's got a tricky little double wood spare, the 2-8. Got to be careful on this one. You got to hit the two pin full enough that it will go back and take the eight. You don't want the ball crossing over and catching the left side of the two, or you'll send it around the eight. Oh, like that. And now the lead is just two pins. Can these guys close the deal? They've been up to the task every match. They've got their most daunting challenge with Charlie, Brett, and Josh. Can they finish it off? Nolan taking a little extra time. He knows the importance of this frame. gets the jersey squasher but leaves the seven pin wiggling watch his reaction to this please don't split okay I would have loved for the seven to go down but at least it wasn't a wide open split he's got an easy spare here he will go cross lane at it Oh, and we've seen this again and again today where the players just borrow too much to the right and it doesn't recover. We'll watch him react to the shot and he knows it was wide. He can't believe he missed it and now he walks off and I'm not sure if Nolan's still in the building. He just took off. Come on, Josh. Pick up, pick up. Come on. All right, you hear Charlie rooting Josh on. He comes in thin and leaves the 2-4. But with Nolan's open, the lead 
moves to our one seed. They have a nine pin advantage here in the ninth frame. Josh with an easy spare, the 2-4. Oh, no! And with that, Dakota, Dillon, and Nolan take the lead back, sitting on the bench. It's a case of, I don't want it, you take it. No, I don't want it, you can have it. Charlie. Up in the 10th frame, his team trailing by two. If he could double, it might be enough. But no, he goes through the nose and leaves a split. The three, seven. Well, Charlie, one of our most, probably our most prolific split converter on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. He needs one right here. The 3 7. Oh, he turned around immediately. He knew it was left. And they finish with three opens in a row. Watch Charlie. He knew it immediately. Mm, mm, mm. Well, it comes down to this. Dakota needs eight pins on two balls. How about all 10? And a most improbable outcome to this Prodigy Bowlers Tour competition as our five seeds have climbed the stepladder all the way to the top. Watch Dakota react to the shutout ball. Yes. And that one doesn't quite get back and he leaves the 10 pin, but it doesn't matter. They have won the match. And they have won this championship. They beat all the players in the field. Misses the 10 pin. That's a 159 to 147 victory for Dakota, Dillon, and Nolan. They went all the way, winning four matches today. The five seed takes care of it. And when we return, we'll get all three of them to sign the coveted trophy pin. Of fun, but to bowl or do anything well, you have to be healthy. So take good care of yourself, and whatever you do, don't start smoking. It's hard to do your best when there's smoke inside your chest. Don't start smoking. We don't like smoking. You're gonna feel all right. Just refuse that light. Don't start smoking. We don't like smoking. So let's go bowl with Mary Lou, cause it's what we like to do. We like to bowl, and we don't to you by the American Heart Association. So what did we learn today? I'd have to say we learned that these kids need some work bowling on long oil. And you know what that means. That means we'll be revisiting this pattern again soon. We also learned, in case there was any lingering doubt, that this Dakota kid can bowl a little bit. He came up with the clutch shots when his team needed him to step up. I'm hoping that Nolan learned that you should never give up after throwing a bad shot. You may think you just lost the game, but you never know what your opponent is going to do. Just hang in there. And Dylan? I would guess Dylan learned that as enjoyable as it may be watching Prodigy, 
It's a whole lot more fun winning on Prodigy. He joins a fairly short list of players who took top honors in his first visit to Prodigy Bowlers Tour. I'd say it's time you meet our three winners. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dylan. No one knows Dylan. He's never been on the show before. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How old are you? I'm 16. You're 16. What do you average? 177. Yeah. And where do you bowl? Henry County Fun Bowl. Henry County Fun Bowl. So you made a long trip up here with Matthew and his dad, Will. And first time ever on Prodigy, and here you are. Well, congratulations. And Dakota. Hey, guys. What's up? <laughs> so you've been here a few times, but never in the winter circle. Yeah. But you bowled really well. I kind of had a feeling sooner or later we'd be having a moment like this with you. So congratulations. You bowl over at... AMF Woodstock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look who walked off thinking he had lost the match, only to see it come back in the winter circle. And this is the second time we had three winners in a day. And both times you've been one of the winners. Oh, I don't know what to say. Oh, hey, Mama, Dad, thank you for letting me come here every Saturday. And we won. Yeah, we did. Yeah, you yeah. did. So, you know what's next. Uh, here's the pen. Today is January 6th. So pick a spot where there's room for all three signatures. This one right down there. Okay, it looks like Dakota's helping you out picking a spot. You just write your name. So you just write your name and date it. One six eighteen. Oh yeah. And this guy has been knocking on the door for months and months. Oh, thank you. This feels really great. I don't know. I think I was. I think it was the second time I came here, and I beat my person, but it's like a team. Hey, but hey, we messed up. We had the low game, and we came out on day three. Huh? Do it. Day three. One six eighteen. One six eighteen will ever be remembered for me. Show it. There you go. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the winners. Let's go. Our first 2018. Yes. Whoop, whoop.